Okay, guys. So good evening. So welcome everyone. So today we are going to start with a very new topic, which is nothing but the web server, right? So today is a day one web server. This is a new topic, guys. Web servers. I'll just say web servers, and uh, we'll be starting today the day one, right? So today the date is twentieth uh, of August, twenty twenty four. And the timing is nine nine PMIS. So guys, as per our course content, right? I just we just decided we are going to explain on the web servers also, right? Web servers is a very important part because this is one of the primary, uh, you know, like uh, servers where you know usually uh, DevOps interact a lot actually, right? So in web servers, there are many types of web servers are there but broadly web servers are categorized to two things uh, there are two types of web servers two types of web servers two types what are those two types what are the two types one is an apache web server and other is an nginx right so broadly we say that web servers there are two types one is apache and other is a nginx Actually, right now the question is that what exactly is web server is all about, right? Uh, so basically, guys, so whenever you have a, you want to, uh, uh, you want to access any website, say for example an end user. So this is your internet. So this is your internet, and this is the server you're having, right? So now whenever a user from the internet, he want to access any web page or he has to access any website. So your web server is the one which is going to provide the access to your website, right? That means that whenever you want to access any web page, what you will do that you are going to send a request to your web server and the intern web server, what will do, it's going to provide you all the websites actually. So in the web server, you are having a lot of websites like website one, website two, website three. So whichever web website you need, right? Your web server is going to provide the access to your web server, website actually. So it means that suppose, for example, tomorrow you want to host your own website. You want to host your own website. You have developed your own website. Now you have to host the website so that it is available in the internet. So you have developed your website where it should be available internet, then you need to host your website into some web server. So, right, so the web servers are, you can either go with the Apache web server or Nginx web server. Right, so whenever you want to, so web server is something like, you can even call it as a hardware also. See, suppose if you say web server, what? comes to your mind, oh, it is something like a server, man. Yes, it's a hardware, it's a, it's a server. It's a physical server. Where what happened at all your websites are getting hosted over here. And also it is a software also. It means that within your hardware, you are going to install some software. So what that software is installing? You're installing either Apache, we call it as a HTTPD, or you will be installing Nginx. So this software, is, it is going to manage your website. So your software is right. So either you hardware or websites are rendered within, or even we can call web server as a software also because. The softwares like Apache or Nginx manages or hosts this, host all the websites. Correct, guys? You can either call it a hardware or the software, we say. So every website on a computer. So every website uh, can say every website sits on a computer. Sits on a computer known as web server. So these web servers are always connected to the internet. So 
तो वेब सर्वर्स आर कंप्यूटर और द सिस्टम दट डिवर द वेब पेजेस सो एवरी वेब सर्वर has an ip address and possibly even domain also even a domain name also right so so every website even see this web server it has an ip address because it's a machine or and it is in the network so whenever a user he want to access any website he will first interact with the web server so web web server is something like it's like a front end we call it as a front end right so you know very well that actually like uh, right in a three tier architecture you know that actually you have a web browser like this so this is a web browser so it could be your uh, it could be your chrome it could be your, your internet explorer it could be mozilla chrome anything right mozilla right so so this we call as a front end actually front end or just a user right here you have your website sorry here you have your internet right and after this what happened right you will be having a combination of your uh, web server and the application server in some organization what they'll do right they'll have both the web server and the application in a same machine web server plus application server in the same machine or else what they do in some industry what they do they'll keep a separate uh, server for the web server and a separate server for the application server it could be anything it, you they can you can configure both web server as well as application in the same machine or else you can keep it separately if you keep it separately it's a three tier we say if you if you keep it in the same machine we call it a two tier actually it is left to them it's left to their uh, it's left to the the way they architected it they can keep it in either in one server or the separate server right so consider that they are keeping it in a separate server so we have a web server you have uh, even your uh, application server right and finally you have your database server right so this is not about your web server this is your application server and the final is not about your database server. this is what we call the three tier architecture and we know that actually web servers are a very important uh like one of the very important uh, uh tier or very important components in your three tier architecture because a user actually interacts uh, with the application with the help of a web server so whenever a user want to interact or he want to come uh, he want to access any application right he will send a request via the internet to the web server only and through the web server what is happening that the web server what will do web server is going to redirect the request right to the application server and finally if there is any kind of a changes or transaction is happening into the application so all those transaction history and everything will be stored in your database server yes. so this is what we call the three tier architecture i'm just telling in a very high level guys i'm not gone in detail about this one right we will see it later three tier architecture we will see it later but right now i'm just saying that this is how it happens right so now your application server and your database server this we call as a back end actually this we call as a back end back end and your web server act like a front end actually right okay guys so now as part of our course guys so what we are going to plan we are planning to cover both this uh, nginx and apache both are uh, very good web servers so you will see uh, around the globe people are using apache and nginx right many organizations are using apache and even many other many uh, many of the other organizations are using uh, nginx and in and in many other organizations they are using combination of apache as well as nginx why they are using combination of apache and nginx together because like nginx will act like a reverse proxy nginx acts like a reverse proxy what is it we'll see later 
that's the reason you will see that many organizations are using combination of nginx and apache b apache to be used in their three tier architecture so in the three tier architecture they'll use both this servers actually so now guys now what i will to do that as part of this uh, uh, this topic i am planning to cover first nginx because nginx is very important and this is what which is mostly asked in interview apache is also asked but nowadays nginx is mostly asked in interviews that's what i thought that let me start with the nginx so nginx is uh, a very important uh, web server and it is one of the fastest web server we say actually right and 90% or, or you can say 80 to 90% of the traffic whatever today we are seeing right they pass through this nginx servers right so many of the uh, like uh, high moving traffic websites say for example like netflix it uses the nginx dropbox it uses the nginx like that there are many websites are there which it uses nginx as its web server it means that those uh, uh, netflix web pages or dropbox web pages are hosted onto the nginx server so that's what i thought that let us first start with the nginx once we complete the nginx we are going to see about the apache is it clear? So Nginx, uh, it might take around five to six sessions to complete it because there are so many uh, topics are there in this Nginx and uh, you need to drill down a lot uh, in learning Nginx. That's what like I will take a little bit uh, more sessions on Nginx so that we all are well versed with understanding on Nginx and also we can uh, host or we can even install, we can uh, you know, manage our own Nginx uh, uh, servers in the organization. We can manage everything effectively if we try to learn a little bit in detail in this Nginx. And this is what, again, it is required uh, by many organizations. When they ask it, they'll particularly ask like how much in-depth you are knowing on Apache or Nginx, right? So you have to have a very good understanding or knowledge on, on this Nginx and the Apache web servers. Right. So, guys, what are the things which actually comes as a part of the Nginx? So, uh, so let us start with Nginx, actually. So we will be learning in the Nginx from the day one onwards. So, Nginx, what we what are the things which are having in Nginx, actually? So, we will start with the introduction on uh, on the Nginx. So, this will take some ample time to cover. And uh, there are, I am going to list out all the topics what we will plan as part of this Nginx. We will even see the installation on Nginx, we'll see uh, uh, whenever you are learning web servers, guys, let it be Nginx or Apache, you need to have a very good understanding on HTTP and HTTPS protocol. So what I'll be doing that as part of uh, this course, I'll be covering a little bit more on HTTP and HTTP protocol, how it works, uh, all such things I'm going to cover so that we will get to know about that, how exactly HTTP intern works. Right? Or what are the different components of HTTP? Whenever you're sending any HTTP request from your uh, from your client to the server, what exactly HTTP is all about? What is the protocol is all about? And how the communication happened from the client to the server? And that how the request goes and how the server in turn will uh, uh, you know, uh, respond back uh, to that HTTP request. Those things, little, little minute detail, we have to get into it. So that we will be able to better understand how this HTTP and HTTPS actually works. Right, and uh, we'll also be seeing about all our Nginx uh, labs, lab exercises. Uh, we need to understand a lot of things on HTTP uh, Nginx configuration files, very important. And uh, we need to understand about the Nginx uh, performance and also the security part. Yes, very important is that actually we have to learn about how exactly Nginx is configured as a reverse proxy. and uh, how the Nginx is also configured for the load balancing. And very important, guys, the cache management. This is what the difference in the Apache and Nginx. Apache has a cache management, but sorry, Nginx has a cache management, but Apache doesn't have a cache management. Nginx can be easily configured as a reverse proxy, but Apache, we can't. This is the something like a difference you have to say in the interview. When they ask you what is the difference, anyhow, we are, I'm going to cover today what is the difference between Apache and Nginx, when to use Apache, when to use uh, Nginx, when to use Apache also I will discuss so that you will get a clear understanding about, clear-cut understanding about why we have to choose a particular web server. It depends upon our requirement. In some requirement where we will be choosing Apache as our web server. In some other uh, conditions, we'll be using Nginx. So that also we have to have a very clear understanding. So cache management is one of the very important uh, feature what we have to be learning. Right. 
right? Apart from that, we have to learn about the uh, something we call the static uh, asset. Actually, it is uh, a part of your uh, uh, your uh, assist with part of your engineering. Uh, what are the things, man? Mm, static assets, access management. These are very important guys, actually, and uh, uh, logging management. HTTP configuration. This again is very important. We have to understand this also. Uh, what are the modular architecture? How models works in your uh, Nginx as well as even in Apache also. Finally, we have to even understand about the cryptography. CRYOPA cryptography, right? PHR. Yeah. So this is what guys I thought like I have to cover uh, as part of our uh, Nginx course. Uh, is it fine, guys? Sure. Right? This is what we have to cover as part of the thing. One more, uh, uh, it's fine. So, one more uh, thing I just want to confirm. Will it be covered SSO certificate, HTTP to HTTPS? Yes, yes, we have to cover, sir. We'll be covering that also. Okay. All those things will be uh, when we are doing a lab exercise, right? At that time, we'll be showing you like how you have to uh, create an old SSO certificate. Okay, okay. Right. How to install it, where you have to install it, right? Okay, thanks. Those all those things here. Right. So now, guys, uh, before getting into it, I thought like let me first undertake like uh, understand like what is the history behind like Nginx when the Nginx was evolved, right? Usually what happened, right? This Nginx was basically it was designed or it was developed by a person uh, uh, by a Russian actually, by a Russian developer actually. His name is uh, Igor uh, Sovi. He is a guy who developed it actually. So in the year 2004, I think he developed this. So he was basically he was working on something like a concurrent C with a concurrent 10k problems actually. When he was working on a concurrent 10k problem, what is this concurrent 10k problem? So during in 2000 or 2004. Uh, usually what happened, we had an Apache server. So what he did, right, he tried to send some 10,000 requests to the Apache server. And he wanted to see how the Apache was behaving. So usually what happened, right, Apache was not very comfortable It if it uh, if it gets more than uh, like uh, 1,000 or 5,000 requests. If you're sending more than 5,000 requests at a time, uh, connection requests to the Apache, Apache cannot serve so many number of requests. Apache was... Miserably, it was failing it actually. So that's the reason what happened, right? This uh, guy, Igor uh, Sisove, he, when he was working for this 10K problem, he was not getting any kind of a solution for it. That's the reason what happened, right? This this person, he started developing uh, a new web server and later he called it as a uh, Nginx actually. So Igor ordinarily wrote this actually. He was a guy who actually ordinarily wrote this, uh, uh, wrote this Nginx wrote this Nginx uh, to solve the C 10K problem, concurrent 10K problems. And he made it as an open source. Open source means many people around the globe know they started contributing a lot of things in Nginx. Later, a lot of new features were added, right? Those are all contributed by many people around the globe, actually. But initially, he's the one who developed this and who made it as an open source, actually. So that's the reason what happened, right? This origin Nginx was actually released as an open source in the year 2004. So today we are having Nginx. Even we are having Nginx Plus also. Nginx Plus is a commercial uh, product, right? So somebody want to go to the commercial uh, product, actually, they can go with the Nginx Plus because Nginx Plus has a lot of features. Right. And uh, Nginx is an open source. So many organizations, they use in a open source Nginx also. And many other enterprise application, enterprise uh, companies, they go even with their Nginx Plus also. So Nginx or Nginx Plus can handle hundreds of thousands of concurrent requests. So they handle actually hundreds. I can't, I can't say hundreds, thousands of, I can say thousands of concurrent requests. And uh, power more than 50% of the busiest internet 
sites on the web actually. So more than 50% of the you no know, busiest internet sites, right? They all go via the Nginx itself, Nginx or Nginx Plus. So that's the reason what happened. Nginx is very, very popular, right? In a very large scale where you are to, uh, you'll be keep accessing the website again and again. And uh, more than 10,000 users are accessed. Say, for example, Netflix. Netflix is accessed by lakhs of people, right? How exactly the request is handled? So many number of requests are handled by the Nginx servers only. So they will be using like something like Nginx Plus itself to handle so many requests, right? That's what Nginx is very, very, very popular actually. So, so if you see that definition, actually, we say that Nginx is an open source software for web serving, reverse proxy, caching, load balancing, there are so many features are there. And even like media streaming, you want to do any kind of a media streaming, you want to uh, do a audio streaming, video streaming, and anything, right? All are managed by Nginx, effectively, and many more. Right. Apart from this, actually, what I uh, have uh, understood that actually Nginx, uh, it can also uh, functions as uh, what I can say, it also functions for the proxy server for your email, actually. So for example, you have email. Have you heard of IMAP protocol, POP3 protocol, POP and POP3 protocol, POP or POP3 and even SMTP? So many organizations, what they do, right? They configure the proxy servers for your email also. And also, it also acts as a reverse proxy and uh, load balancing for your HTTP or uh, TCP and UDP servers also. So this is one of the very important things that whenever you want to uh, manage the email servers and whenever you want to set up a proxy servers for email servers, right? So the best solution is the Nginx itself. So that's the reason in many organizations you will see that they will be even used for the proxy servers for your email servers like IMAP, POP3, and SMTP, 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 right? So we say that actually basically Nginx was created for the faster web servers to serve the concurrent num large number of requests, we say. That's what Nginx was designed, okay? So Nginx was designed, was created, we can say, was created as fastest web servers to serve the concurrent large number of requests. Clear, guys? So as I said, right, like whenever you are uh, want to deliver solution for your high traffic, high traffic website, such as uh, like a Netbox or, sorry, Dropbox or Netflix, right? Uh, you could see that Nginx used, or even like uh, as per the information, right? What I've uh, read in official documents, more than uh, like 400 million websites, they relay on to this Nginx itself actually. So more than 400 million websites, High traffic websites, more than 500 million high traffic websites. Right, websites uh, relay on on this on Nginx. Uh, Nginx and Nginx Plus, whatever. Right, so why they use it? Because that it is very faster uh, web, web server. That is one thing. And secondly, what happened that right? whatever the content delivery it want to deliver with uh, with some kind of a quality, uh, reliable and secure, uh, right? That is all delivered uh, by nicely by your web, Nginx web server. So more than 400 million high traffic websites lay on the Nginx, Nginx Plus to deliver their content quickly reliably and securely.
And one more thing, guys, very important is that actually, uh, when it comes to the Nginx, Nginx is very less expensive, actually. Nginx is very less expensive. And the, and the thing is that uh, the configuration of Nginx is very simple, actually. Configuration of Nginx is, are, is, or is very simple, actually. It is so simple that even like uh, uh, even like suppose for example you have a hardware load balancers like FI load balancer or many other load balancers are there right even nginx is so simple that you can easily configure the way hardware load balancer works right the nginx can be easily configured so that it it will act like a load balancer only it'll act like a hardware load balancer that's the reason what happened why many of the companies will go to engineering because the configurations are so simple and it, and it is so less expensive is that actually you can easily manage compared to the hardware load balancer engineers can be easily managed that's it that's what right and also very important thing guys one more thing i want to add it's uh, engineering is very simple and more uh, configurable actually i can say configurable than any Hardware load balance. And uh, one more thing, guys. And what happened? No, it is Nginx, right? It is, and Nginx is uh, designed for all uh, your modern clouds, cloud architectures, actually. Modern cloud architectures. It means that, actually, guys, say for example, you have your AWS or you have a GCP, right? You know, right? A AWS, GCP, they internally use the load balancer, actually. They use the internet, they use the load balancer. They are, most, most of the load balancers, whatever they're using in turn is an engineering system. Right. Even though we don't know because those are, we don't, we can't see it, but internally they manage everything through the engineering load balancers. So that's what, what happened. Even engineering are even used by most of the cloud architects, modern cloud architects. Like let it be AWS or GCP, even Azure also, they use it, the engineering side. So that's the reason what happened. Everywhere, you no know, Nginx has become more and more popular. Right? Why? Because the same thing, guys. The why? Because it is so popular. Because it is like a, you can say that it's a multifunctional tool, actually. Because it supports so much uh, uh, features like uh, load balancing, reverse proxies, you know, like content cache management. Many features are there, right? That's what they use this Nginx websites. Okay, and very important, guys. One more thing, I I just am recalling now. Uh, Nginx actually it also supports for your microservices. So whenever you know that nowadays we are all uh, getting into microservices, right? We need to even the Nginx also supports the micro uh, services also, and also like it supports uh, the latest uh, HTTP protocol also. Say for example, you have HTTP one is there, one point one is there. Even you have HTTP two is there. All these latest HTTP protocols are also supported by your Nginx. That's the reason what happened. Nginx is very very popular because you know you know that in Docker. Uh, uh, when it comes to container technology in Docker, right, we use this Nginx as a base image, right? Similarly, in case of a Kubernetes, you see in Kubernetes internally, we use Nginx as a load balancer, right? So that's what it is. And even you take it anywhere, either in the containerization technology or even in the orchestration uh, technology, right? Nginx is actually used. Have you heard of uh, Apache being used in Kubernetes for the load balancer? No, Nginx is used there. So that's the reason what happened, right? You have to learn Nginx everywhere. Right. So Nginx is also like it is a Docker is a Docker friendly because if you go to your uh, official uh, Docker website, right, you will see that you will get official uh, Nginx image. You'll get actually Nginx image. You get actually. So what you can do that you can actually download that uh, Nginx image and you can just uh, run a Docker container. So Nginx will be up and running. Right. Later, what happened? Right? You said that Rajesh, I want to uh, do my own configuration itself. Actually, no problem. You can download as a base image. You can take a base image of your uh, Nginx image, and then later you can uh, add all instructions or all uh, configurations, whatever you needed, right? And then finally, you can create a new image out of it, right? That means that you want to do your own customization. So it is possible because that right, they are so much friendly that actually with the Docker, uh, in the Docker of whatever you're having a base image, right? That image you can download, you can do it. So basically what I'm doing to that, if you want to make your customized uh, uh, Nginx uh, server, right? You can actually create a Docker file and you can do it. Actually. So do you agree with this statement, guys? 
So that's the reason what happened, guys. Because of all these features, all this cloud environment, right? Cloud-based applications, load balancers are there. They prefer to go with the engineering side. So all cloud-based applications, uh, load balancers, prefer to go with engineering. Okay, now coming back to the Nginx, because Nginx is a web server, we know that, but to provide the more features for the Nginx itself, actually, it supports a lot, uh, lot of open source third-party libraries, actually. Nginx supports a lot of, uh, lot of open source third-party uh, libraries, or we call the models, actually. We'll be learning these things later, guys. What is a model and all, right? So, what? Why we are using model? Because like we need to have an extra features in your engineering site. Right? We need to depend upon the third-party libraries, and all these third-party libraries are open source, guys. You will find n number of hundreds of models are available. You can go and you can try to use those models with your existing engineering so that it is going to give you more flexible and uh, it will going to expand the features of the Nginx. So to provide more features, flexible and expandable. Expandable. Of course, I mean, if, when it comes to the Apache, Apache also has a lot of uh, more models are there, more than like 60 plus models are there in the Apache. So we use those models for our own requirement that we need some extra features we needed from those uh, from those specific web servers. You have to make use of those uh, models. So there in Apache, we call it as a dynamically uh, loadable model, we say actually. We say it's a dynamic loadable model, model, whereas in Nginx, it is not dynamically loadable model. It doesn't support the dynamic way of loading a model. You need to add on that model to the existing linear, uh, Nginx binary itself, right? So this is one uh, small, uh, you know, like I can say, uh, drawback of Nginx that actually Nginx, can, uh, in, when it comes to libraries or models, you cannot dynamically load it. You have to only make it as a part of your existing Nginx binary. What is it? I will tell you later. So did you understood this statement? What are I said now? Guys, so that's what I said that at the very beginning that before we start the class, certain things you might not understand now. You'll understand it later. Once I'm starting doing practical, right? Whatever I said now, you're going to understand it later. Don't worry. Now, so guys, till here, are you okay, guys? Any questions you have so far? So whatever I said, that is all about the Nginx actually. Abhishek, Baban, any question? Chakrabarti? No, sir. No, sir. <clears throat> okay, great. So are you finding interesting or uh, just bore? No, it interested. Okay. So guys, now the thing is that actually, uh, one thing always comes to mind always, uh, sir, we know about the Nginx, we know about the Apache, but what exactly is the difference between, what is the comparison? So this is, I thought that let me, for at the very beginning, uh, that's what I thought that. So Nginx, what is the comparison? In the, uh, comparison between Nginx and uh, between Nginx and Apache. So this is very important, guys. So this we call as a characteristic uh, comparison, actually. And uh, guys, here I'll be taking little more time because there are so much uh, comparisons are there. I might take around like half an hour time to discuss on this itself, but it is important. Whatever I'm saying that this is an interview questions. They'll ask you straight away, they'll ask you, what's the difference between Nginx and Apache? Here, this is what you're going to make an impression to any intro that you, if you start telling all these things, like you'll get impressed with your answer. Right? Sir, what about the uh, Tomcat Apache? Yes, Ap Ap Apache Tomcat is also like a, a web server itself. Yes, that's what I missed out. I think there are many web servers are there. Apache Tomcat is also one of the web servers. It acts like a web uh, server and also I mean mainly server. Tomcat we'll use for the backend servers. So. Yes. Yes. Backend servers. But you can even host the websites also. That's what I'm saying. That it acts yeah, like a host, but, uh, hmm. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Fine, guys. So comparison. What is a comparison actually? See, both Nginx 
uh, Nginx and Apache, uh, Apache, both are web servers. Both are web servers and uh, have their own characteristics. Have their own characteristics. So what are those characteristics? So firstly, you have to understand with the design, guys. The first important thing is the design. Design means what are the design behind both this? So what happened, right? The main difference between the Apache and Nginx, uh, it's in design itself. Design means design in the architecture itself. So what the Apache will do means Apache, we say that it uses a process-driven approach. Process-driven approach. And creates a new process for every request. So what it means that suppose, for example, if you are having, if you go to the diagram, suppose here you have installed the, you have configured your Apache actually. So Apache, the architecture of the Apache is that by default it is a process-driven architecture. It means that now, for example, if there are ten connections are coming into the Apache. Concurrently, 10 connections are coming like that. What the Apache will do that for each and every connection, Apache is going to create a process action. It's going to create a process. action. So for this connection, it's going to create a process. For this connection, it's going to create a process like this. For this connection, every process, for every connection request, there will be a single process for its for uh, for a single process uh, you know will be will be created by the apache itself actually. it's something like it's going to spawn or it's going to fork for every uh, request it's going to fork it so that's what what happened right whenever you are uh, installing apache and when you are configuring it i am not sure how many know this you can configure saying that how many number of requests it can take at a time you will configure in your apache configuration saying that some find a request at a time it can take not more than that like that you will configure it actually at the very beginning or some thousand requests. Say, for example, you say that Rajesh, I'll make sure that I will try to handle some thousand requests by the Apache. It means that whenever you configure it and uh, whenever you will see that some thousand requests are coming up, your Apache can handle all those thousand requests concurrently at a time. So, for the same time, apart from thousand, there are many other requests are coming. Like, so for example, thousand five requests are coming. So, the other five requests will be dropped down. It will not be served by the Apache. So, this is one of the uh, like a drawback means it means that actually it is a configurable unit to say that how many number of concurrent requests at a time you can take it actually you cannot give a very large number i think maximum you can say uh, you can give up to like some few thousand like 4000 or 5000 requests they can configure so that the apache can uh, you know can drive all those things so that's what it says that it is a process driven approach it means that for every request there is a particular process will get created whereas Nginx uses the driven approach, you say. Even driven. This is the same word you have to tell in an interview. It's a driven, uh, even driven architecture. Architecture to uh, handle, uh, can say, multiple requests. Request within one thread, actually. What it means basically, guys, now what uh, Nginx is designed means Nginx what happened when you install, suppose this is the same web server, I'm installing Nginx here. I've installed Nginx. Now, Nginx also can get some hundred or thousands of requests it will get. But Nginx what will do, it will not create it will not create a process, a different process for handling each and every request. What Nginx do that, it's a single process which is running, but it will create a multiple threads actually, like this. For every request, a single thread will get created. And that single thread will take care of uh, like a request for that particular request. It means that if there are 1,000 requests are coming up, 1,000 threads will be created by the same process. It means that there will be only one process will be that, but in turn, a lot of threads will get created. This is what we call a multi-threaded architecture. It means that a single process can handle multiple requests. So whenever a single process can handle multiple requests, what is happening that you could say that actually the working of uh, that application will be very faster. Here what happened, right? For Apache, for every request, it has to create a process. So there is an involvement of creating a process, managing the process. Once the request completes, the terminating of the process, so many other things are happening in the back end. 
That's what you can consider. Apache is little slower compared to Nginx. Nginx is very much faster because that for because Nginx as a single process only it will handle all the requests. If there are ten thousand requests are coming, ten thousand requests is handled by only single process itself. But that single process cannot handle everything because the single process will going to in turn create multiple threads. Every thread will take care of uh, serving one request. If there are ten thousand requests are coming, Nginx is going to Nginx process is going to create ten thousand threads. Did you understood, guys? This is a very, very basic design architecture. This is what I have to tell at the interview. So one is nothing but you, one is nothing but the process driven and other is a event driven. Event driven is something like where threads are involved in the process driven, driven. There are no threads involved, they are involved with the processes. Nginx is built on, I mean, any programming language. It's, it's developed by the C, C++ man, actually. C and C++. C++. Not native, C++. Apache is also uh, designed in C only, C language only. See, these are a very, very older uh, web servers, man. Apache came very long back. Before Nginx, Apache came. So obviously, it is designed by in the either in the C or C++ language, and Nginx is developed in the C++ only. Right? Okay. Okay. So multiple request is handled by a single process. It means that multiple threads is going to, it means that one thread is going to take care of each and every per request actually. So that's what Nginx is very, very faster working compared to your, compared to your uh, Apache actually. That is one difference. Second thing is that uh, I can just say the simplicity. Okay. See what happened, right? When it comes to simplicity, right? So I say that Apache is better in simplicity. Why? Because that actually you need to uh, for developing and innovating any kind of an application on Apache is very easy actually. It be why? Because that every process for every connection there is per process will be there actually. So per if it is a per process later what happened? Right? Whenever you want to customize it, it suppose for example you want you want to do some kind of a customization, you can insert a model for any kind of a customization at any point of time whenever your web server is serving actually. So it means that actually simplicity. How I can say that in case of uh, Apache developing and uh, innovating applications, innovating applications that if there are a lot of changes are there in the application which have to be served by the server web server, so then the Apache is more favorable because Apache on Apache is easy actually. Because one connection, why? Because that one connection per process is the architecture right for the apache right one connection per process model which is which apache follows which makes it easy actually which makes it easy which makes it very easy to insert the model so what is it guys i will tell later but right now understand that okay when it's web serving logic actually it means that actually, guys, whenever you want to do any kind of a customization or something, right, during the runtime, no, no, Vasya, they, they are not still developing Apache web apps, man. It's already been developed, man. Of course, many, many features are coming up. Features are coming up because of the models. That's what I want to say. Okay, Vasu and others, guys, keep your question aside. We will discuss later. Okay, you can note it down with, with you, but I'll be not be uh, continuously seeing the chat. That's what I said that you can park aside your, uh, this one. Right, so whereas uh, Nginx, uh, right, the Nginx, it is the simplicity is, I mean, when it comes to simplicity, Nginx is a little complicated, guys, actually. Nginx is a little complicated. It's a little complicated. Because what, why? Because it is little complicated because, right, guys, now when it comes to Nginx, Nginx will handle all the requests with the help of a threads, actually. For every thread, for every request, per thread, per request, a thread will be created, actually. So now what is happening that, uh, suppose, for example, if any one thread fails, right, execution fails, right, then what happened? It will affect your, the whole Nginx process, it will affect. And inserting a model during the execution, right, it is slightly difficult in Nginx, actually. 
it is of course it is it is it can be done i'm not saying no it's it can't be done it is done but you need to carefully manage of inserting any kind of a model whenever nginx is serving any web service any whenever it is serving any request actually so that's the reason what happened right it will become little complex event when 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 it comes to nginx actually. so let me write down what i'm saying it is little complicated so nginx model developer developers needs to be very careful needs to be very careful to create efficient and accurate code so uh, without any failures there what happened guys see for example in case of nginx right if suppose for example if you if any if any of the request where it requires some additional features apache will insert a model dynamically if suppose if that fails during the loading of the model if that process which is uh, which is taking care of the request if that fails it will not affect the other running processes because for every request there will be per process will be there so if the process will get disturbed or if it get killed the apache will not be disturbed the main apache service will not be disturbed whereas nginx because it's a single process right and within a single process the multiple threads are getting created that's the reason what happened right? when you're trying to load any model you need to accurately load and you need to uh, you know you need to make sure that it shouldn't disturb the other existing or other running threads that is what it is little complicated in comes comes to nginx but still what happened what i've seen in that nginx they have uh, to many extent they sorted even this issue also they're able to easily manage even loading or inserting the model very carefully so that they have did it very efficiently that's what nginx is popular why it is serving so many uh, mm -hmm. number of requests because of they have made it everything easy actually okay and uh, without any failure and to interact appropriately while the complex event driven uh can kernel to avoid blocking to blocking operations so it means that actually as i said right if any one requests if any one request guys if any one request or if any one thread uh, get hanged uh, it might even affect the other threads which are running within the within the engineering process then it might uh, it might disturb the whole engineering process let me that then uh, it will be very difficult actually so that's the reason what happened right it's very quite complex but they have made it very simple okay guys so there are many features are there let me add on few more features actually so that you will get to know like when it comes to the performance actually performance is also i have what i have understood is actually performance also apache is apache perform is better actually performance is better when hosting the website hosting the site okay so the, when when you are hosting when you know that when you know that there are lower traffic when you know that okay you say that okay you have uh, you have built an application where you know like you are you are only giving this application only for few customers only you are giving request my uh, uh, not more than 50 or 100 requests might come at a time so it means that you know that there are always a lower traffic uh, for your application so in that case what happened you can go with apache so apache is the best for when you are hosting the sites because you know that there are lower traffic or it means that or there could be very fewer uh, or there could be something like like a thousand requests or fewer than an hour suppose assume that if there is more than if there are lesser than a thousand requests or fewer per hour then go with your apache no whereas an nginx actually nginx performs better actually for sites that experiences a lot of requests simultaneously so as i as i've been keep telling that whenever simultaneous Oh my God! What is it? I say M U L T A N. I'm forgetting the English spellings also. Simultaneously. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Now. Okay. Now, why exactly? See, what is the reason behind? Uh, uh, what is the reason behind the poor? Uh, 
guys please always uh, mute guys don't unmute it because i keep i have to keep mute uh, i mean i keep the, i i see that people start unmuting and muting and they don't mute it at all please don't do that okay see why the reason behind see the reason behind uh, the performance is that actually what happened right i will tell you now i will i will tell you now so reason for the poor performance reason for the poor performance in apache is this uh, i don't know how many people already know this there is a file known as http http ht access file you know ht access file this ht access file will have all the information about the url about the locations uh, and everything right so now what happened this is a single file which you will find in apache actually and what is happening that whenever you have lot of websites are there the websites has to access the same ht ht dot ht access file always because that it has to know that okay where is the which is the url and where this url is hosted in which uh, uh, app server it is hosted everything all those details will be there in ht dot access file itself dot ht access file itself so that's what what happened right there is always a poor performance in apache because that this because of the http uh, file or your operations it means that actually whenever you are actually suppose you are having some 100 websites are there all uh, 100 requests are there 100 requests are accessing 100 different websites so all those 100 requests has to do an io operation onto this ht access file only because this is a single file which you will see in apache actually so that's what more and more io operation is happening it means that more and more memory consumption is used more and more cpu utilization is used whenever you are uh, accessing the same file by 100 or 200 or 5000 or thousands of requests right so then it will happen right what will happen that your apache becomes very much slower actually it becomes very slower and also like there is nothing like a caching system in case of an apache right that's what what happened right apache is very much in performance it is very very poor compared to nginx so nginx has or nginx whereas nginx performs i can say 2.5 times faster than apache okay and it can even uh, serve more than 10k uh, connections actually more than 10k connections at a time it can take it actually right so how it can do it how it can be more faster because that nginx is faster when it comes to static web pages actually static web sites you know that static website say for example whenever you are uh, trying to read some pdf or document right say for example you visit a website where you know like uh, you will find some pdf or document or you will be seeing so the document or the content no it is a static content it will never get changed actually whereas the dynamic content something like you go to the youtube.com or you go to your uh, google.com or any website where or amazon.com where no the things will be dynamically getting changed it means that the website when you do a refresh it will be keep changing it actually so those are nothing but the dynamic content we say right so there are two types of websites are there either it contains a static content or it is a dynamic content now nginx is very very faster when it comes to static website or static content right when it comes to dynamic web content uh, dynamic uh, content both nginx as well as your uh, apache it performs equally to be very honest apache is more faster uh, when it comes to dynamic content right whereas an nginx it is little uh, slower but still what happened they have did lot of improvision now i see that nginx is equal or it it acts like a same it works at the same speed as apache works at when it comes to the dynamic web content so in dynamic web content website content or website both nginx and apache are working Uh, working level are same actually okay so guys one more thing i want to tell you i uh, that's what there are certain things which i have to bring in now okay uh, usually what happened right whenever it comes to the apache so whenever suppose for example here when you are see for example whenever you are sending a request here say for example when you are sending a request where you want to do some kind of a financial transaction say for example you go to the hdfcbank.com you have to provide the username and the password 
right, to log in. After you provide the username and password, you need to do some transaction. So for every request, what are you sending, right? You are sending a different, different request, right? So it means that your Apache web server should act. It means that actually whatever you are sending a dynamic, so it has to act means whenever you're sending a different, different request, first you have logged in it, later you're doing uh, the transactions and all. So what the Apache web server will do that whenever you're doing dynamically, you're trying to do a lot of changes by the end user, that Apache server will try to connect to the web application server and that application server will try to use the service for the user. It means that whenever you are trying to do any changes or any dynamic changes you do to your work, right? Then what happened, right? It has to quickly uh, retrieve and render to the application. And finally that, that uh, that uh, web page, right? It will be dynamically, it will be, uh, the output will be given to the end user actually, or by the request, right? Now, how exactly, uh, uh, you know, like uh, it happens basically, basically in case of Apache, there is something like a, it has a uh, embedding processor, it say. We say is a embedding processor. What we call, this is little high level guys, which I'm telling now. Uh, I don't expect that you to understand everything. It has something like an embedding processor. Embedding process something like where whenever any kind of a dynamic website web content is required in the back end, what Apache will do that it will try to send those dynamic content to this embedded processing. This embedded process will take care of uh, you know, making sure that all the dynamic content that whatever the user require, right? That can uh, it can resolve it and it can give an uh, output to the end user actually, or it can render those pages to the end user. Right. Whereas what happened, right? Here, what happened, right? In case of Nginx, it doesn't have that kind of an embedding processor, actually. It doesn't have an embedding processor. Right. So what happened, right? Uh, in case of Nginx, there is something we call it as a, uh, we call this as an external processor. External processor. So those external processes are something which are there at the back end within Nginx. So whenever any kind of a dynamic content request comes to the Nginx, actually, Nginx cannot solve by itself, actually. It has to send back to the external processor and the external process will do something and it's going to it's going to give back the, uh, the dynamic content uh, to the Nginx and Nginx finally it renders to the requester. Now what happened, this embedding processor is a part of the Apache itself. It is not outside, it's a part of Nginx. Uh, Apache itself, whereas an external processor, it is not a part of Nginx. This is a small difference between Apache and Nginx. I don't know how many people have you understood this, but I'm just telling you that actually, whenever any dynamic content request comes in, actually, both works in the same level, actually. Both works in the same level. Whereas static content, what is happening that? In case of static content, what happened? Apache server, it is not faster. Whereas the Nginx, the static content is very much faster. Why? Because that there is something like a cache management is there. With the help of a cache management, what is happening is that Nginx can work very, very, very faster. It is That's what I said that it works 2.5 times more faster than Apache. Why? Because that it has something like a cache management. Clear, guys? So these things we will be coming across later, right? See, for example, if I want to draw an example here, right? For example, uh, this is the user actually, the user. Right. Suppose that the user wants something like, um, you know, like uh, the photos, like the dot PNG. It requires something like a dot PNG. Photos, right? Dot PNG or dot, dot peg, whatever, dot JPEG is there. Right. Or else it uh, needs something like a dot TXT file. Right. This is something like a static content. So here, what is happening that here you are having an Nginx web server. This is your Nginx. Now what happened for any kind of a static uh, uh, content? This is a static website content. You say that Nginx can quickly serve the service. It can quickly serve the services to the, uh, to the static content or to your, or to your uh, static content actually. Now, for example, whenever there is something like where, you know, like uh, you are actually uh, sending a request for something like a PHP. This is something like a dot PHP. Dot PHP that it is not static. It could be, it is a dynamic actually. Then in that case, what happened, right? What the Nginx will do that Nginx is going to send such request that PHP request, Nginx will send a request to something in the back end. We call it as a um, PHP formatter actually. We call it a 
PHP formatter. There is something in the back end of the PHP formatter. PHP formatter. Formatter. Now, what the PHP format will do that it will take an input of this uh, PHP content, dot PHP content. It does some processing actually. And then finally, it sends back that dynamic content request to the Nginx. And that Nginx will send back that, uh, that dynamic content request to the request array. This is what it happens at the back end. So this is what the PHP formatter we call. This is what I was saying earlier, known as an external formatter. External processor is nothing but this is what the external. This is nothing but your external formatter, actually. This is what you call the external processor or a formatter. Now, what happened? Because of this reason only. Now, what happened, right? Whenever a dynamic content uh, is sent from the Nginx to the PHP uh, formatter, that PHP format is going to send back the dynamic content and finally Nginx is going to send back to your requester. That is what, this is the idea behind why we call the Nginx as a reverse proxy. So you might not understand now, but it will going to get more and more clear in our upcoming sessions. What is a reverse proxy? I'm going to take a, a separate uh, session on that actually, right? But the, the idea behind the reverse proxy is that actually this is what the idea behind the reverse proxy. Is it fine, guys? So as I said, right, as per the, as far as your static content is concerned, Nginx is more popular or more faster than the Apache, right? So let me write as part of, or as far as, as far as static content, static website content is concerned, Nginx is faster than Apache. Okay, guys, so what else? OA support. Uh, OA support wise, I can say that actually Apache is more favorable because Apache supports on almost all platform, uh, Unix, Linux, uh, Linux, and Windows, actually. Uh, whereas the Nginx, actually, uh, Nginx, is, on the, when it comes to OS support, Nginx is not that fun because Nginx supports in all native Unix and Linux, actually. But Nginx, somehow, it is it it is not, it doesn't work properly. It doesn't uh, support or works on Windows properly. So that's what, when it comes to OS support, Nginx is not popular. Apache is popular, actually. Okay, guys. Now, what are the other features you have? Like uh, feature models. So I'm seeing the differences. Apache has around 60 dynamically loadable models. that can be turned on or off. It means that whenever you need any model, like you can use that model. Whenever it doesn't use it, you can turn off that model. It is not required. Whereas an Nginx, it has a, have the third party core models. But it is not dynamically loaded. It is not dynamically, dynamically loaded. It means that actually, it means that Rajesh, whenever I want to use the model, third party models in Nginx means you need to make that model as part of Nginx binary. So it means that you need to install it actually. You need to make it install it. So when it comes to security also, part also, both are equally uh, important because your Apache, it uh, offers a lot of configuration for your DDoS attack, uh, even like uh, you know, any kind of a HTTP DOS attacks or DDoS attack or brute force attack, we say, right? All those attacks can be saved by your uh, Apache server. Same thing with the Nginx. Nginx is also same thing. Nginx also support all this, uh, like all kind of uh, attacks actually, right? So that's what, in case of security, both are same actually. When it comes to security, both are equal, both uh, web servers equally thanks.
Now the question comes, Rajesh, fine. There are so many other, so guys, there are many other features are there. I don't want to really go into that detail, right? I didn't go with that much data, but yeah, there are many other are there. Uh, I will say it later uh, slowly, but now the question comes, right? When we have to choose Apache, whether we have to choose Apache or Nginx. So the question comes out, when choose Apache? When choose Apache over Nginx? When we can choose Apache over Nginx? Now I think you got some fair idea. So when you choose it, guys? Lower See, you traffic. said that actually, yeah. Lower traffic. Yeah, obviously, uh, when you are having a lower traffic, yeah, when you need a lower traffic, obviously, uh, like uh, Apache is used actually, low traffic, that is true, right? That is correct. Right. See, for example, as I said, right, whenever there is something like a sharing of the resources or sharing of the configuration, in Apache, we have something like HT uh, access file, as I said earlier, access file. It has all the configuration for for all the uh, different websites actually hosting. So in that in that case, whenever there is a shared hosting environment is required, then in that case, Apache is good actually. So when shared hosting environment is required, Apache is better over Nginx actually. Apache works better actually. with better. Virtual hosting also same, no? Say shared and virtual or yes, yes. Both even virtual hosting is also supported by engineering also. But here what is happening that uh yeah, I will tell you the difference actually. That's what I have to tell the differences when I explain about the engineering configuration file, right? And uh, when you, when I explain about the uh, engineering configuration file and when I explain about the HTTP access file, right? This do when you understand the difference, then only you'll understand it. What exactly, how exactly, like, uh, what, it, which one it is making more, uh, you know, better actually. So you'll see that Apache history access is making more, uh, you know, like, uh, better than compared to your engine search. So, like, whenever you are having something like a functionality limitation, you saw that you said that Rajesh, I don't want many more functionality. In that case, yeah, you can use Apache, right? Or whenever, like, you don't have that kind of a large enterprise application, you, right? You have a, a it's not a very big scale application. It's a very small application which you have uh, developed for your customized uh, or for some specific client side. Right? Then in that case, you can go with Apache. And there's no need of to go with the uh, Nginx, right? But so Apache now, will work uh, reverse proxy or not? No, Nginx is more favorable in reverse proxy. Now, when you choose Nginx over, when we choose uh, I can say uh, Nginx over uh, your Apache. So we are just now saw, right? Like, for example, whenever you are having some fast static uh, websites, actually, content processing, uh, it means star, uh, static uh, content processing websites you're having. Then in that case, yeah, obviously we'll go with the uh, Nginx, actually, right? So whenever there is a there is a high traffic website, actually, right? High, high traffic websites are there. Then obviously we will go with the engine exchange. So this is some of the things which we see uh, when to use Nginx, when to use Apache. Uh, can we use both? Can we use both in our environment? Can we use both of them together? It means that I need to use both Apache and Nginx together. Yes, you can use it actually. So you can use uh, Nginx as, or you can use Nginx in the print of Apache as a server proxy. For example, so you have a client here, something like that. You have a client like this, right? So in front of the client, actually, you can have your Nginx here. You can have your Nginx, right, in the front. Okay, this will act also like a load balancer, right? And in the back end, what you can do that actually, you can have one more Nginx actually here. You can have Nginx as a back end, where this Nginx will be having a static content actually. So, for example, whenever you are having something like a, a JS or a CSS, uh, 
js files or css files or images everything right or it'll come fixed to videos actually so these are something like a static content which will be there as part of your site right so right and uh, you can have your uh, what you call uh, you can have your apache actually here so this is not about your apache itself See, for example, whenever you're accessing any PHP websites, actually, where there will be a dynamic changes into the PHP page. In that case, you can have your Apache. So in that case, what is happening that here, the Nginx actually what happened, if it needs a static content, it will try to, uh, the request will go to the Nginx where the static websites are being hosted here. Whenever the Nginx reads, uh, needs some kind of a dynamic uh, uh, websites content, whenever it want, whenever it want to work on the dynamic content, then it sends at the back end, it can send it to the Apache actually. And Apache can serve it can take that request from the Nginx incoming front end or nothing but the Nginx and it can serve it, it can process it and it can send back that request to the Nginx. Right. So this is nothing but happen. So here in this case, Nginx and Apache both are used. In the front end, Nginx is used and the back end, Apache is used actually. So this is uh, typically in some projects, you can see that both are used in this way. Right. So here what happened, Nginx will act like a reverse proxy itself. It is acting like a reverse proxy. It acts like a reverse proxy in this case. It acts like a load balancer also, but it, it when whenever the Nginx is sending a request to the Apache for a dynamic PHP content and it waits for the request to come, so then the Nginx will act like a, it is acting like a reverse proxy. Clear, guys? So, guys, now what we can do is that actually, like, uh, we can go with the installation now, right? There are two types of installations are there. One is the straightforward installation. So, what we'll do as part of installation, uh, we can install the Apache, not sorry, Nginx on both, uh, I can say Ubuntu and even the CentOS actually. Okay. So, through the package manager, through the package manager, you can install it actually. It means that whenever you're using Ubuntu, you know that I have to use the apt get met, uh, package managing method. You have to use to install it. Similarly, in case of your in case of CentOS, suppose I'm using a CentOS seven, you have to use a uh, what you call m package method or m package manager. You have to use for installing it actually, right? So this is one way of installing it actually. The second way of installing is installing through the source code actually. So sometimes what happened, right? In the organization, what they do, right? Like they will ask you to customize your Nginx or customize your Apache server. It means that you cannot just go with the package and install and do it. You have to make sure that you need to do some kind of a customization. So how you can do the customization? You can do the customization when you are installing your Apache or Nginx through your source code. It means that you have to download the source code, do some kind of a configuration changes and everything, and then like try to install the Nginx. So these are the two methods which you will see it actually. In most of the organization, they will try to go and install through the source only. It means they'll try to download the source and they'll try to keep in some kind of a, in, in a standard path. And then like they try to configure and they try to uh, make sure that through the source, they are installing the Nginx or they're installing the Apache. So when I was working in my previous organization, I installed the Apache through the source only, not directly with the package manager. I didn't go with installing uh, through the package, but many other places where, you know, like you don't have that much uh, of a custom engine, you are just plainly using it actually. You don't need many more custom engine or you know, don't need many other features or uh, you don't need, uh, you don't want to really control a lot of things in our Nginx or Apache. Then you can plainly go with the package manager, install plainly and you'll get uh, all those configuration. You can manage it. But sometimes what happened, right? You need to manage a lot of features Features, you need to manage your the whole uh, you know, Nginx you need to manage by your own, right? Then in that case, you will go with the installing to source code. Clear, guys? So can we see now? Can we see now how to install both Apache, uh, not Apache, sorry, Nginx in both the methods, right? What I will do here, I will try to launch Ubuntu as well as CentOS 7. So first, let me log in through my AWS account. So control.aws.com. Okay, I'll try to log in into my account.
Ok. Okay, guys. So let me go to the EC2 service. And uh, you can go to. So let's see if I have any servers. No, I don't have any servers. Let me launch it. Let me launch. And uh, let me give something like uh, uh, Ubuntu Nginx because I'm installing through Ubuntu. I'll just go with the Ubuntu Nginx. Right? I'll go and I'll choose Nginx, uh, sorry, Ubuntu. And I'm choosing the latest only 24.04. Come down here, instance type is to dot micro. It's fine. Inst uh, key pair login. I can go and I can choose with the key pair. I have already key pair with the name new key, new key. So that's what I'm choosing it. And if you come down, you can go with the network editing settings. Here the VPC is okay. Subnet you can choose anything. I'll choose US hyphen East hyphen one A. So that is nothing but your first subnet. Come over here, select the firewall. That is our secret group. So you can go with the default whatever I have a default right. That I can go it and come down and I can launch it so now let it come up it will take time so let me launch the centos now i'll go with the centos 7 guys actually okay so let me launch it and uh, what i'll do i'll go with the uh, centos uh, nginx like this come over here because the centos is not available here guys uh, in the quick menu or quick start it's not available you have to browse with the ami so browse more ami come over here go to the aws market ami there you can just uh, search for CentOS. One second. Yeah, you can just search for CentOS. So you will get a CentOS. So let me go with some older version of CentOS 7. Where is CentOS 7 x86 with update HM? I can select this. So this is chargeable guy. It is not free. So you could see that 0 0.012 per hour, right? It is. I can go with the subscribe now. And uh, yeah, so you have chosen the seven center seven center seven. You already chosen right, and then like come down. It is already chosen the two dot micro, which is a free and a free trial. That is fine. Key pair come down here and just select the new key. Network settings I can edit it. You can go with the same VPC and preference. I can go with the one B uh, US hyphen East hyphen one B as a subnet. Come over here, select the existing secret group which I already have. That is a default. And anything else is required, nothing is required, just say launch. Right, come down. So what we'll do that, we will try to install the Nginx both on CentOS and Engine, uh, on, on the Ubuntu. But what I will do that, I will not do on both on installing it because I have to remove the package, I have to do everything. What I can do that, I can install Nginx onto the Ubuntu but uh, through the package manager, but I will not go with the CentOS uh, installing through uh, to the package manager. I'll not do through, I'll not do it in CentOS actually. Why? Because that again, I have to remove everything. I have to manage everything. So it will take time. So I don't know to do that. So let me don't think, let me just go with the Nginx installing on Ubuntu with the package, man uh, package manager. And for installing manually, right? When you want to install it with a source code or source code, then we will do in both, we'll do it actually. We'll do it parallel so that we'll understand. Okay. So now I think let it come up. So it has already come up. So Nginx and Ubuntu, this Ubuntu Nginx has already come up. Let me log into this server. So click on this, get the public IP, right? Get the public IP. So there, I think in here, I have my putty. So launch the putty. So I'll give the public IP. I'll copy paste the public IP. Uh, connections, uh, default color setting, everything is there. Connections, I think, auth credentials is already been pointing to the PPK file. So that's what I need not to do it. So I can go directly and I can just say open it. So accept the connection, right? I'll go with the, the username is Ubuntu and login. You're able to, you're able to log in as a Ubuntu user. What happened guys? Yeah, it took some time, I think, because of slow network, I think. Yeah. So let it log in. So now uh, I have logged into the Ubuntu. Let me log in even to the CentOS also. Okay, CentOS, I think it has come up. So let me go with the CentOS. Let me copy the public IP. Go over here. Just launch the putty XE. 
paste the CentOS uh, public IP. I think other things I didn't have to do anything. I'll just say open it. Accept the connection. So here you have to log in as a CentOS as a user, default user. Right, it has logged in. What about here? Yeah, it has logged in. Now what I will do guys, I will try to install both this, uh, uh, both this uh, Nginx uh, as being a root user. So let me switch to the root user. Here in Ubuntu, uh, sorry, in case of here, I have to execute this command sudo su hyphen root. Same thing I have to even do with the CentOS also, sudo su hyphen root. So let me switch to the root user actually, right? Now, right, so whenever you want to install any package, it is always better that you have to just say sudo apt get update. First, you need to update your uh, apt package repository. Okay, so this I'm doing in a Ubuntu guys. Same thing, if I come over here, let me update the package manager here, sudo yum, because this is your CentOS yum update, sudo yum update and say enter. Three, sudo yum update. I need to update the package repository. Okay, okay, yeah. So guys, here when I try to run an update, it is giving you some error. Uh, this is a known error, which I have seen it many times. Because this is a CentOS 7, right? It's an older version. So those uh, yum repos, right? Those are not been updated. That's what we are getting this error. So how to solve this error? We can just copy paste this error, guys. This complete error like this. Let me copy it till here. Let me go to the Google. And let me just paste this error, actually. When you paste this error, guys, you're going to get many links to go it, but you can go with this uh, support.cpanel.net, right? This is the URL. Just open this URL. So I will copy this uh, in our document also. Right. Uh, refer this URL, the URL, the URL to fix uh, uh, M update. In right. So this is a URL, guys. So what I have to do, what he says that actually, he will say that uh, you can open the CentOS base repo. First, he said that uh, you please take a backup of that file. Uh, and then like you try to do this changes. So let me do anything. Let me directly open this file, actually. I'll copy this thing. I'll go to the CentOS here. And I'll directly open this file. VI, open this file. OK, I'll remove all these lines. So just press D button, it will de delete everything. I'll just go to the insert mode and just blindly copy this whole uh, stuff. Whatever this configuration file is the right, just go and blindly copy it till here. Copy it here, go here and then paste it. And then save this file. After that, he says that actually you have to just run this command, m clean all n and m make cache actually. Go and just paste this. So now when it comes, when it start updating like this, you can understand, okay, whatever the uh, repo is, the CentOS base repo is the right, that is perfectly fine. It means that whatever this content, what we are copied, right, all these base URLs, all are perfectly correct for the CentOS 7. Earlier what happened, these base URLs were uh, not correct. That's what yum, uh, sudo yum update or something, right? It was not working. So now it has started working. Now we can just uh, run a sudo yum update or just say yum update. Now it will work. So this will take some time because that you are updating uh, how many MB you are updating. You are updating around 207. It will take some time. So let me keep it for updating. Okay. Let me keep for updating. It will take some time, guys, actually. Right. So let us see. It is going to update the grub. So you could see that there are 107 packages that have to be updated. Right. So it will take time. So let us go back to your Ubuntu now. So under the Ubuntu, whenever I want to install Nginx, it's simple. You have to just say sudo. Let me clear the screen, guys. Sudo apt get or just say apt get or without get also it works. Apt install nginx nginx hyphen y and say enter. So you can install the nginx with the simple command sudo apt install nginx hyphen y so it has installed your nginx it has installed nginx how to verify whether it is installed or not you can just say nginx hyphen v it will show the version so whenever you're installing it after installing it will show you the version 
Now let us see if there is an, any NGINX process running or not. If I execute a PSAUX, pipe it to grep i NGINX. You could see that now after you install NGINX, automatically the NGINX process has been started. Right? You could see that if you execute NGINX, you could see that there is something like this is not but your master process and this is not but the worker process. Worker process. And you could see that for the master process, who is a user, root is a user. For the worker process, www-data, this is a user actually. So with this also, you will be able to know that Nginx is up and running in your system. Or else, we can even go with the system CTL uh, status and Nginx. So when you see that, when you execute system CTL Nginx, you could see that your it is active and running. Is it fine, guys? This is a very simple way that you have to, whenever you want to install the Nginx, you have to just a sudo app install Nginx and then it will start installing. You could see that when you're installing Nginx, it's not only that Nginx is getting installed, there are many other packages are which are getting installed as part of Nginx. So Nginx is installing, Nginx hyphen common is also getting installed, right? This is what, when you're trying to install it, this is the step actually. And how to check it? You can either check with the PS hyphen AUX, AUX, pipe to grep hyphen Nginx, or as system CTL status Nginx. Any of this you can use to check it. Right? Now, after installing Nginx, guys, once you install Nginx, most of the important configuration files for the Nginx will find under etc Nginx. This is the path, actually. You could see that if I do LSF and L, you could see that you will find all the Nginx configuration files, right? Conf.d, right? Mimi.type, models enabled, Nginx.conf. So Nginx.conf is a main configuration file. So if you try to open this configuration file, it has many things, right? It has many things. This we call it as a global directive. This you call the global data. At the top of the file, right? What is having it? Means that here in this nginx.conf file, you're having something like a user hyphen data. Worker process is auto, okay. PAD, something like it is saying that okay, whenever the nginx process is running, where it has to create that PAD of the process, under slash run nginx PAD, uh, there it is running. Error.log. Suppose whenever you want to access the error, so this is the path of getting you the error.log file. It means that under slash or log nginx, you'll find error.log. And it is including all your models. So under ETC Nginx, model safe and enable star.conf. Whenever you want to include any model, this is the path, ETC Nginx model dot hyphen enable. This is the path where all the models are placed. So that's what you're including it. After that, you're having something, the event directive you're having. Event, I'm using the word known as a directive. Okay, you will see what is the directive is all about later. So under the event directory, you have something like a worker connection is 768. What is this? We will see later all these things. After that, you're having a HTTP directive. So you could see that it is something like a HTTP directive is there. Open the flower bucket, come down. And you could see that it is closing with here. So it is closing with this flower bucket. So open and close. And within inside this, you could see that it is having some basic settings like send file on, TCP to uh, no push on, Type hard max is called 248. It is also including the ATC Nginx, Mimi.type, default type action, a default type application, SSL protocols. So it is having some default settings are there already. And whenever you want to access the logs, right? This is the access log. It means that whenever the Nginx, uh, whenever any operation is happening onto the Nginx, where you'll get access log? Under slash bar log Nginx access.log. Whenever you want to see the error logs, where it is under the same path, you will see that under slash where log nginx, you will get an error log dot log. So you'll have these two important files, guys. One is error dot log and other is an nginx dot log. Right? And after that, there is something like a mail directive is there. Mail directive is there. Right? Right now, what they did, right? They have put it everything as a comment. It means that they're not using this mail. Whenever you need it, you can uncomment it and you can make use of it. Right now, they have commented out. Right? So, this, whatever you are saying, HTTP, right? Should it be open the bracket, flower bracket, and close the This is also one of the directives. What is called? One of the directives. Like event directive is there, right? 
this is used for certain purpose. HTTP is a data used for some other purpose. So you can have a directory within a directory. Inside this HTTP directory, you'll have some more small, small directories you can create it. That is what, like when we learn about the Nginx configuration, how to fine tune uh, based on your requirement, right? You will always come with this file and you will try to edit this nginx.conf file. Am I clear, sir? In next upcoming class, we will be learning about all these global directives, event directives, HTTP directive, all those fields we will be one by one, we will be seeing it actually. So this acts like a key and value. Key is something like a send file, value is on. Key is something like a TS, uh, TCP node, value. It acts like a key and value pair like this. Am I clear on this, sir? Now, after this, if you go to slash var log index and the ls, you could see both the logs are there. Access.log, error.log. If you do a tail hyphen f, r, you could see that both you are seeing access.log and error. Log. Now, currently, now what happened, right? Nginx is up and running. What you can do that, you can go to your uh, your uh, AWS account, you can just copy your public IP address, come over here, and then just paste the IP address in your, in your browser. You could see that the default Nginx is loaded now. So whenever you see this default Nginx web page loaded, it means that your Nginx is up and running. So you could see that when I try to access the Nginx by just uh, pasting the uh, public IP. So you could see the logs, what it has happened. See, you could see that you are, you, in the access.log, you could see that some messages you are seeing it right. So it is calling a get method and it is using HTTP 1.1 version and it is returning the value 200. So whenever for the first time when you are accessing the Nginx, uh, right, it will always return the 200 price. When you are trying to uh, access frequently, say that, say that I want to access again one more time. You are, you'll again try to do a refresh. Again, one more time refresh. So when you do a refresh, refresh again, now you could see that it is again opening. This time it is giving you something like 304. 304. So it means that for the first time, it will always return the HTTP code as a 200. It means that successfully retrieved the response code. Now you are getting 304. It means that basically it is now, it is not retrieving through directly through the web server. It is actually retrieving through the cache. So 304 is used for the redirection. So 300 response code is for always for the reduction. Here we are getting a code 304. It means that your engine is actually now serving the page or service from the cache management. So what is this all? This, this, this get HTTP 1.4. What is Mozilla? What is this? We'll try to see all these things one by one, sir, in the next coming classes. Because to, you have to even understand what is this access log about is all about what is error dot log is all about we have to understand this this uh, uh, log output format also you have to understand because with this only we'll be able to understand like what is the logs when it comes to the nginx of course error dot log if there is any web page if there is any issues there right you will find all kind of issues in the error dot log is it clear sir Guys, did you understood till here? Any doubts you have so far? Are you finding interesting? I mean, we have not yet started, <laughs> but I'm just saying that, okay, this is what you have to understand. Yes, okay. sir, you Good. Now, sir, the main, I will tell you, sir, the main important is this only, sir, under ETC engineering, right? The main important is this only, sir. All this confusion and count.d, Models enabled, engineers.com, uh, site available, site enabled. This is what we have to understand, sir. The simple is that at the end of the day, I should know all these things, sir. If you want to understand Nginx very well, simple in one line I'm saying. And this is what you'll be learning in one or in the next two, three sessions. You'll be learning. I have to configure as a reverse proxy. I have to configure as a load balancer. You need to do changes into this configuration file. As simple as that. Right. Now, what we're going to do is, guys, uh, it's already 10.45. Uh, 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 guys, can I continue for 10, 15 minutes or 15 minutes more or to show you the installation uh, through the source or else can we do it tomorrow? Same thing. If you go with your, uh, uh, with your, uh, uh, this one, 
with this is your CentOS. In CentOS, you have to just say yum install nginx. Simple, guys. Hyphen y. That's all. No package available. Why? Uh, what is the package for nginx? How come why it is showing like this error? Oh, yeah, yeah, tomorrow, okay, Raju. I know that, uh, just I'll see, uh, Nginx uh, installation, installation in CentOS. How come, man? I think it, it, need, it needs an Apple, uh, I think. It needs that Apple software, that's what. It needs this software, guys, that's what. If you copy it, and if you paste this Apple, I forget this Apple. Yeah. After this is installed, then only Nginx will work. Now you'll say that sudo uh, m install Nginx. If and wait. Now it will work. Okay. Now it is installing the Nginx. So there the prerequisite is that actually that you should always install the EPL Apple release whenever you are working with CentOS. CentOS 7 installation. You have to install this one. And then. Sorry, come again. Sir, we are using port number 88. Right? Yeah, yes, port number 88. Yes, port number 88. But in here, you copied public IP and just pasted it. But uh, is there any default port or it will run some? Any, default 80 port, sir. IP? Yeah, default port is 80, sir. 80. Tomorrow okay. you say that actually, Rajesh, I want to okay. uh, host my own website. I need to use a 80, 8081, 8082, like that. Then it is configurable, sir. You have to configure all those things. That also I'll be showing you how you can okay. make run a different websites in a different different ports actually. Okay, okay. So thank you. Yeah. By default, it is 80 ports, sir. Okay. Now uh, it is installed actually in case of your Nginx. It is installed, sorry, in case of CentOS. It is already installed actually, right? I already installed it. I think I didn't paste it. Yeah, it is installed. Now, after installing, let us see whether uh, any kind of a process is running as part of it actually. AUX pipe to grep pipe and I Nginx. So it is not running because uh, in case of Ubuntu, when I try to install the Nginx, by default it started the service. But here it has not started that service actually. So you have to just say system CTL start engineering. Now you will see that if you execute PS and US pipe to get engineering, now you will see that you will think that there are two processes are running as part of engineering. One is a master process and another is a worker process. So with this, you will be able to understand what engineering is running. And the configuration is same under ETT engineering, you have the same configuration file, same thing. Nginx.conf is there. All these are defaults are actually. Whatever you see, right? Everything are default, even in case of your Nginx. So you can go to your Nginx. You can go to there, go and you try to copy your uh, public IP of your of your uh, CentOS Nginx uh, server and then paste it. Now you could see that actually it is showing. So here what happened, the system page is different here, but you could make out that Nginx is running here. So here in case of uh, Ubuntu, see, you are getting uh, this default uh, as a web page. But here what happened that right? you could see that you are getting some, this is a default web page for your CentOS. Later you can even change also. Whatever you need, right, you can change. You can host your own website and then like you can host your own index.html CSS and you can show it. That is what we'll be showing in the next class. So guys, uh, I hope that today's class, you understood it. What we're going to do tomorrow, that we are going to continue from installing the uh, Nginx uh, with the source code on both CentOS as well as on, um, on your uh, Ubuntu. Parallel, I will show in both the things so that you can customize it. And later, what we are going to see that uh, in tomorrow's class, that we are going to understand all these configuration files. Particularly Nginx.conf, I want to cover it completely. I want to make you understand. 
so it is little uh, 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 tricky to make you understand because there are many things are there many concepts have to make you understand before that i have to even explain about the http http protocol how that protocol works how exactly the you know like the connection established whenever you're sending a request how the connection goes and uh, goes and hit to the web server and what would be the response code what would be the uri what would be uh, like uh, uh, you know there are so many uh, uh, things are there. What is the header of the HTTP? How it looks like? All those things I have to explain it actually. So, the, so that is little tricky. You have to understand. Once we are okay with that, then we can easily understand. We can understand and we can make it nginx as uh, for hosting virtual uh, websites. You can make it as a load balancer, reverse proxy. Other things and all are easy actually. You can learn everything fast. Clear? Okay, guys. I think uh, we are going to stop it. Let me know if you have any doubts, any questions. Uh, sorry, uh, you mentioned in uh, features, uh, Nginx is uh, um, protecting as a thread. Uh, so means, what exact means thread? See, that's what uh, what happened in case of a Linux uh, term, Linux or Unix term actually, uh, there is something we call as a process actually, right? Process is not, but it's a running instance of a program. We say whenever any, uh, any, Application has to get executed. It has to execute via the way with the help of a process. We know this, right? Now, what happened? What every process has a feature that the process can actually create a multiple threads also. Every thread can execute. So, in in when you define a thread, what is a thread? Means actually, a thread is nothing but whenever there is a function in execution, whenever you want a particular function to be executed, whenever any particular function to be executed, then we use thread. So where are threads? So threads are part of the process only. In this, in this process only, there are multiple threads can be created. So what thread will do? Thread will take care of execution per function. Whereas the process will take care of execution the whole application actually. So here in this case, when it comes to Nginx, Nginx is serving uh, serving each and every input uh, request with the help of a single thread section. So it means that there is a single process which is running as part of Nginx. And as part of the multiple requests, there are 10,000 requests are coming, 10,000 threads will get created within the same process. Okay. So working is very much faster when it comes to threads actually. Okay. So there are, see, always there are two ways of executing any application. Man. Either the application can be executed by the process itself or the, or the application can be executed even by the thread also. So why we are using a multi-threaded because that for achieving a faster way of, uh, faster way of execution, uh, we need to reduce the, you know, like a memory consumption. We need to reduce the CPU cycles and everything, right? In that case, what happened, we'll go with the multi-threaded application. So Nginx is designed with the core of the multi-threaded concept only. Whereas your Apache, it's a process driven, we say. It means that for every crea for every uh, request which is coming in with uh, for the Apache, right, it has to create a process itself as a whole process. So their threads are not used. The process are used for executing per request. Here, threads are used for ex for uh, taking uh, for taking one request per for for per request. It it creates a threads for threads uh, for every request actually. So that is a that is what the as I said it's a design architecture like this is how it has been designed actually. Clear guys. So I hope that you understood today's session. So it was a bit like a theoretical stuff, but I thought that it is required because we have to understand the differentiate between Apache and Nginx and uh, like how the Nginx was evolved and like uh, that's what I thought that I will start with. In the upcoming session, we'll be learning more and more, guys. Don't worry. Okay, guys, so with that, we're going to stop this session. Okay, let me stop the recording.